Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, once we'll see you all. So we were looking at the Mishnah at the bottom of Kuf Chafei Omad Aleph and the Gemara on the top of Kuf Chafei Omad Reis. Um, and, and I think in, in essence, all we managed to achieve in my last year was really Chazara on uh, on bringing us up to date. But today, I, I really want to move uh, move uh, move forward. Um, let, let's start with the the analysis of the Gemara on the. Uh, on the on the Mishnah, um, we saw Machlokas. Um, get the right page of the Gemara would be helpful. Saw Machlokas uh, Rav uh, Rav Ami Om Rabbi Yochanan and Rav Asi Om Rabbi Yochanan. Um, and I think we discussed last week what uh, last year what the uh, the difficulty in understanding exactly what the what the Machlokas is. Either way, the Gemara continues and says the Ozdul Tamayu. That uh, that Rav Ami is being consistent in um, in his view. So let's have a look what the consistency in what way he's being consistent. So again, Rav, Rav Ami said, let's remind ourselves. Rav Ami on Rav Yosef said that by Maniach, that that by um, I'm sorry, Rav Asi on Rav Yosef said that by Maniach the uh, it, it's um, the Even Al Piachovis is a kisoy. So you have a stone, which is not a KD, it's a stone. It's it's the the strictest type of muktzah imaginable. It's it's a stone, it's not a KD, it's 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 a muktzah machmas kufoi. In in no way has any preparedness. And all you need to do is put it on the chovis, and it's redefined as a kisoi, as a lid, and it ceases to be muktzah. That's the uh that that's that's Ravasi. So you see that the view of Ravasi is that minimal um uh preparation. Is enough already to rewrite something and redefine it as not mukta. Um, well, why do you say no preparation? Well, uh, yeah, or no preparation even. On which the Gemara then says, the uh, uh, you'll see in a minute why, why I said it because of Tosis, really, but sorry. Exactly. He's put on top. So, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm leaving it vague because this is what really what Tosis uh, picks up on. This is the problem that Tosis addresses. Um, but, but yeah, but you, you, you do relatively nothing and somehow that's enough to to redefine it which is a kiddush because this stone in no way is it physically different to any other stone um as we saw last time when we learned what are you going to do after shabbos you'll probably discard the stone there's nothing special about this stone you didn't it's not that you cleaned it or it's uniquely shaped stone um there, there, there's there's infinite stones that you could use so there's nothing significant about it you may not even be planning to use it once the chavis is used up, you may just chuck the stone out. Nonetheless, this is enough to make it not look to make it muchan shabbos. So now let's have a look at the story. Um, the story of Pamachas Holas Rebbe Lebakam Echod and Motz and Nadbach Shalavanim. So they're, they're, they they find this heap of stone stones, and now the question is, what preparation do you need in order to make it um, uh, these heap of stones usable for shabbos? In a few moments, maybe not in a few moments, but in, in, in a few minutes, we'll look at what usable for Shabbos means. What do they actually want to do with the stones? But um, they, they, they have to do um, they have to do something. Now, Rav Asi, the Shetosa, he says, all they had to do was su'u the um, uh Go and be, uh, um, wipe off the... Uh, um the 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 sorry the schmutz. the schmutz yeah I don't know what's um the, the sorry the dust the the yeah the mud that's stuck on the stone and now um tomorrow they're not muksa and you can move these stones around in order to make them into comfortable seats. The alternative view is that that's not enough. And all you can do on shop is to sit on them without moving them around. And therefore you have to arrange them in position now already. So Rav Asi holds that on Shabbos you can move these stones around in order to use them on uh, Shabbos. And all you have to do is wipe off the, the dirt. So Rav Asi the Shetosai, who holds that even minimal uh, preparation is enough to remove Mukta from something, unlike the Cholkim in the Gemara, who hold that no, minimal preparation wouldn't be enough, and you either need a really significant preparation or they would indeed be Mukta on Shabbos. You can sit on them, but you can't arrange them. Yes. We'll get to that later. That, that is a great question that we'll get to later, which is why can you even sit on them with the Mukta, but let's put that to the side. But but either way, Ravasi says they're not because you can move them around. Why? Because you did minimum preparation. Ask Tosus, really uh, picking up on, on your point. Um, I, in what way is this Ravasi de Shatosoy? Here, Ravasi said, all you have to do is Hanoch or greater. You just have to put it on a lid on the 
pot on the chavis on the barrel. I'm sorry, that's a very minimal preparation. Um, whereas with the avonim, he said that you have to actually clean them off. That who, who says the two equate? And Tosis gives a a very wishy washy vague answer. Um, let's have a look at Tosis' answer. Yesh Loma to this Tosis of Masnav Azdu to kiss the chavis sogila the hanocha. Kiss the chavis is enough with hanocha. Shadaka la soisa koldehu to lo boy tikkun amai sagomo kishakis akedim. Four kisai hanocha is enough. It's not zero preparation. It's minimal preparation, but it's hanocha. Why is that enough? Because that's all you need in order to make something a good lid. However, with Nadvach Shal Eben, um, there, Shif Shuf is enough. It doesn't need anything more. And therefore, for Nadvach Shal Avonim, a Shif Shuf is enough. Translation of Toysas is not Peshat that Rav Asi, so, or before we say the translation, question Toysas. It seems very vague. Rav Asi holds you need minimal preparation. So by Kisoi, Panoch is enough. And by Nadvach, Shif Shuf is enough. What, I mean, what degrees of preparation do you need? And what, what defines this is it's quite it's quite hard to sort of halachically grasp hold of exactly what Tos, point Tosis is making. If if we if we now had to extrapolate, so we have two data points. We have Chovis where the Evan needs just Hanacha, and we have Nadvach where you need to wipe off the 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 tip, the, the um uh, mud from the stone. How much if we give another scenario do you have to do? So Rav Asa says minimal, and Tosa says that's the Ozdula Tamai. That's what, how the Gemara is equating the two levels, because in every case it's minimal. But each case you have to judge the minimality, the minim minimalness of it um, in, 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 in a case-by-case -case basis. It's a little hard to understand I I exactly what the definition of Tosis is and what the, what the sort of core feature is. So that, that's all I really wanted to clarify in Tosis. That, that Tosis tells us what he's saying. Tosis says the point is that you need... Um, Tikkun Omaisa, which is enough um, that it doesn't need Oyu to Tikkun. It doesn't need anything else in order to be usable. So what was Toysus' point? Toysus seems to understand that Rav Asi's understanding is that you don't need a positive act of Hachana. I, I want you to hear the, the reasoning here. You don't. What's the common denominator between these two forms of preparation? Toysus' answer is it's a negative preparation, not a positive preparation. In other words, you don't need something that makes this stone or equipped to be a lid, or you don't need something which makes this pile of stones equipped to be a, a chair. That's positive preparation. That's the high level of preparation. All you need to do is remove any impediments to use, and that's enough. And as long as you've removed any negatives, that's a significant enough level of hachana. And, and, and you hear the Chiddush of Rav Asi, the beauty of the Chiddush of Rav Asi in, in Tosis' words, and you hear why the Gemara calls that zero preparation. Because Rav Asi lives in a world in which everything is, is glowing with potential for human use. And as long as there's no barrier, it won't be mukta. So the alternative view to Rav Asi is that hachoma, preparation, means you need to positively prepare something. There's nothing, for crying out loud, there's nothing unique about this stone. This, it, can you say this stone is only made for use? It's somehow destined or set aside for use. You can't say that. There's nothing unique about this stone more than any other stone in the field. So, so what yeah. makes it muchan? Rav Asi's answer to this question, what makes this muchan? Rav Asi's answer to this question is, you're removing an impediment. As long as there's no barrier, it's fit for purpose, and you've, you've put it in place for that use, that's already enough. Um, with the with the nadvach, there, there is a little bit of impediment because these stones are dirty, so you have to remove the dirt off the stone, and then they'll be ready for use. So as long as it's um, you're planning to use it, and you've removed from the body of the object any impediments use, that is sufficient. You need a plan to use because muchan in Rav Asi's world, world is, is sort of subjective, not objective. It's not whether the object is only made for use. The stone is not only made for use. It's whether I want to use the object. And as long as it removes any impediment, that's enough. And that's called zero hachana. Ask Tosis, what do you mean the zero hachana? With the nadvach, you need to cleanse them off. So Tosis, that's not hachana. You're not, there's nothing in what you're doing that makes this uniquely destined to be a chair. All you're doing is removing an impediment to be a chair, and then your human plan is enough to make it cease to be mukta, even though there's nothing that you've done to the object to carve it out and give it chairness qualities, chair-like qualities. That's the lambdas of Tosis. 
the stone on the you don't because there is no impediment. That's Moses' point. So as long as you don't need to remove a lot of impediment to prepare, because that would be a positive preparation. All you need is there is no impediment. As long as there's no impediment, that's enough. A chomer, in his view, is about me. I'm planning to use it. That's enough. If there's an impediment to my use, then that's clearly not enough. Remove any impediment. My plan to use it is 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 enough. I don't need the uh, I don't need any positive actions in order to do a chomer. That that's that's the longest thing I was bringing out. So the language, by the way, is shifshuf, is not cleaning and dust. That's why I was struggling with the words. Shifshuf means um, uh, uh, polishing sort of thing, smoothing. And Rashi describes it as tit, which means there's there's like um, stone like mud or stone like. Um, you know, like yeah, 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 stuff that's stuck onto it, and that's what you're removing. Um, if you would have a clean stone, if, if they had gone to the Nadvach and had to look at it, and the stones would have all been cleansed because there'd been a heavy downfall earlier, then an achanami that, that would be enough. That's the point. You don't need any positive achana, you need removal of negatives. Yeah, and Robin, is it um, the yeah, differentiate between the two types of stone? We said that the induction of anim is already been taking some action by squaring them and metzotet them, and therefore, stagi leshavshifam, that would be enough, and you wouldn't necessarily be able to do this on any on stone on the field, because they haven't been squared out, they haven't been um, worked around. So the, the word you say, stagi leshavshifam, it's enough for them to be rough, because they've already been sort of pre prepared. What, what you're saying is true, but, but for the purposes of the distinction, it's, it's not the critical point. It happens to be true. If you have a stone that's all over the place and completely jagged, then cleansing the mud off them wouldn't be enough because it's still unsuitable for sitting on them. And, and Tosis is saying that. You're, you're correct in your translation of Tosis. But the, the critical point that Tosis is trying to bring out is that the Va'ozdula Tamayu is as long as you don't need any, as long as there's no impediment to use, that would be enough. Therefore, if the stone was, was a crazy stone and not smooth, it, there would be an impediment to use. But as long as there's no impediment, your uh, intentionality and uh, for example, Hanacha, there's now no impediment because it's on top of the covet. That's already enough for for uh, removal of Muxa status. Okay. Yes, Ravi. That, that means to me that Tosfot considers the Mania of the Sabaro like a as a master, there's, there's not a master, yeah, yes. So, uh so you still, still need to be, have some sort of he, he doesn't really say that in his... Um, uh, um, he doesn't quite say that because he adds in Delo Boy Tikkun or my Sagomo Kashaki Sakenim. It doesn't need any, re, any repair. The point, though, is that there's no negative in its use in order to allow the functionality. No, my Sagomo means no further action is needed in order for it to be... Uh, appropriately matukan fixed for use. So as long as there's no um, action needed for fixed for use, that's sufficient. You don't need any positive act in 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 an oven itself. You just need the removal of uh, of of negatives. That that that's my my understanding of the language of uh, um, of process. I've been saying it's a weakness and weakness in the oven view in relation to Tosco. Because actually, you know. Removing any impediment, you're doing positive action. So that's no, because in theory, if you have nothing needed at all, that would yeah. also be enough of one's Ravasi. So that, and that's why I'm, I'm I'm disagreeing with Rafi. That if you had something where zero preparation was needed, then your mashava alone would be enough. That, that's what that's what Tosis seem, to me Tosis seems to be saying. My, my, again, my question on Tosis was that Tosis seems to have put us into a wishy washy world. He asked the question. And which is that I don't understand. In the case of the Evan Abiyah Chavis, all you need to do is Hanach, and here you need Shif Shif, so how does the Gemara say also the Tamai? His answer is, um, each case, uh, you have to see what sort of preparation it needs. It becomes very vague what the answer is. Uh, the answer is, it, 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 sort of from a, a, a legal point of view, Tosis has left us in high note. Like we, we don't know where to go with Tosis. What's the concept behind Vavasi that gives a common denominator between all these answers? I, I think... The concept is that Tosis is saying is you don't need any act of positive preparation. That what makes something muchan in Ravasi's world is the the intentionality. What do you need? You need to remove impediments. Once you remove impediments, that's enough. So now we have an ability to pascan onwards and extrapolate from these two data points. And in each case, work out are there impediments or, or not. And as long as it has a basic functionality, there's no impediment to basic functionality. Even though there's nothing miyuchad or specific about this object. 
that that makes it different to other objects that that's that doesn't matter you don't that's not what mukta means it's a, it's a it, it, this this is a, a big clanky machlokas. This is a, a sort of conceptual difference in understanding what hachana of of mukta mukta means. Yeah. But there is still need of Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, everyone agrees you need something to make something mukhan unless a keli obviously is is yeah. moment. But this is a stone. Yeah. So what makes a difference every stone in 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 the deals? You need something there. Yeah. So you don't. There's no impediment for it to be used by Kisoi. Tosus seems to call that as an impediment because it's not acting as a Kisoi. It could be used as a Kisoi, but it isn't uh, uh, um, able yet to be used as a Kisoi. It could be also because the stones are heavy or need lifting or something. I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. Sorry, Adam. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Question, but I, but, and also, I'm still a bit troubled by the sort of dark or la sota There's still a there still seems to be some mass at la sota is ways to do something. I mean it still to me feels like there's some mass there as well. Just the the the, the point though is Tois is it saying that for the functionality of Kis Soichovis, you're reading him and uh, as is Rafi, as if Tois is saying a spar in Hilchus Mukta. He's not. He's saying a Svara in 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 Chovis lids. Chovis lids only need a minimal miser to prepare them. They don't need any big tickle and they don't need any miser gomel. And therefore, there's no impediment to use um, as long as you put it on. Whereas with it, with it, see, so in, in, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I'm reading the critical point of Tosis is that there's no barrier to, to use. Yeah. That, that's how I'm reading Tosis. Uh, have a look at Tosis, agree or disagree, but that, that, that to me is, is, is I, I think that's very clear. Yeah. Any other thing? Yeah. Just said, uh, it seems that if the stone is next to the barrel on Shabbos, as long as you had a match chopper, you could put it on top of the barrel. If, yeah. if it was a stone where that was an appropriate use and there was no barrier to use, then Enochanami. It seems that, that, that here, this is a barrier to use, maybe because it doesn't fit very well on the Chavis or it's heavy or something like that. But but in principle, if you're if you're like uh, yes, if you're mayachid it for use, and it's it's now omid for that use, it could be the problem with the stone is that if because the, there's tons of stones around, there's nothing that makes this stone muchan. But if this stone is muchan for use, and exactly exactly right, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's my um uh, my my best attempt at, sorry, at reading. One. Yeah, sorry, Josh, you had your virtual hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so it's just on the um. So I think you're saying there's two there's two conditions. You've got the the um intentionality plus the removal of any impediment if there is an impediment. I'm just wondering about on kuf kuf vav amad bet. The it's which Tosfot brings right. It talks about torat kli, which yes. is. What, Again, implies to me that, that we're not about intentionality. We're talking about an objective reality in the item. So, is that a contradiction? Y yes. Okay. So, um, the next question, a fine point. Tosus asked another point. Tosus drew our attention to Kufchaf of onward base, and the next thing we really need to cover is in what way, what to what extent does uh, Rav Asi mean that this is muchan? Through this mashava, um, and Tosis points out that in Kufchafov, it seems to imply that you need something more in order to be a kli. Um, in other words, intention to use something to sit on the pile of stones or to uh, use something as a lid doesn't make it a kli. Uh, it, it, there's nothing in Tosis has just explained to us that comes of Asi. There's nothing you've done in the stone to make it muhan. All you've done is you've removed impediments and you have your intentionality to use it for this. So what, what, what is the status of this stone? So here we have something very interesting, and I, I hope I printed this in the source sheets. Um, yes, the Rashba, I did, I did print this, Baruch Hashem. Okay, the Rashba then, Kuf Chavov, says that the all Rav Asi means is that the stone is muchan for this specific function. He does not mean to say that it becomes a kedi. Very, very interesting. A classic non mukta, as we've said ad infinitum, is is again and again we've said is is a kli. A kli is omade for human use, 
and becomes the servant of humans and therefore is only made for any use whatsoever. That's the whole concept of being a Kli. Um, the Rashba says that all of us he means over here is that this is Mukhan for this one particular functionality, but not that it's a Kli with everything that goes with it. Very, very interesting, uh, very interesting concept. And uh, um, um, the, the, it's, it's not entirely the Rashba's in Chiddush, she quotes it from his great rabbi the Ramban, and, and uh, there's other sukkahs that seem to imply this. I don't want to go into this in too much detail because it, 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 it complicates things, but this, I don't want to anymore call it minimal hachana because we've now got a better definition from Tosus, which is intentionality is what matters, as long as there's no impediment. The Rashba argues doesn't mean that it um, is a KD. It simply means it's muchan for this one function. So it, the Nadav Shalavanam can be used for a chair, the stone can be used for a lid, but to argue that this random stone, which is no different to any other stone in the world, now becomes muchan for any possible uses you can squeeze out of it, that, that's a nonsense. How, how can it have become a KD? So uh, you end up with uh, uh, something which is muchan in one particular use, because I was making it, I had intentionality, but it's not made like a KD to be my slave to be used for anything. Th thus argues the, uh, the Rashba. Yeah. But how does it, if we take the, the middle ground where you put, according to Rav Asti, the stone on top of a bow in the Shokhach model, so you put it yes. unintentionally, but it's yes. on the floor, actually on the ground. Yes. Um, according to Rav Asti, you still need to tilt the bow, right? Because yes. Yes. So, you wouldn't be able to take a stone from the floor on Shabbat and put it on. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Uh, okay, slowly. If you forgot it there, translation is, you do not have intentionality to make the stone lid. Okay, so stone is now mukta. Rav Asi, though, makes the point that he believes the barrel doesn't become a bosses. Why does the barrel not become a bosses? Because you have no intentionality to make, leave it there. The whole lobby of the bosses is that the under container is, is serving the object on top of it. But here, I didn't, I just, I forgot the stone. I didn't intend to put the stone there. So the stone is mukta, the under KD, the hovers is not mukta. And now if you have a problem, you can move the hovers, you can't move the stone, and you can tilt and so on. If you have a random stone on the floor, well, let's analyze. If you have no intentionality, then the random stone is, of course, it's mukta. Mukta machanoskofa is the worst type of mukta imaginable. If you had intentionality, in, in principle, based on what we've learned, if the stone would be immediately suitable and easily suitable, lacking nothing to, to be used as a lid, then you know, intentionality would be enough. The, the, the Gemara says not like that, either because a, a stone needs to be put on, otherwise it's lacking something because it's heavy or it doesn't fit well, or because there's intentionality is a nonsense when there's lots of stones around. There's nothing about this stone. If this stone is made, you'll use the next one. That, that's deemed a, a non-intentionality. But, but in principle, if you have a stone on the ground that, you, that lacks nothing and has intentionality, that would be enough to use for, for so can, that would be enough so not to make it this level of water. Put the international, you can put the intention into it. Uh, before Shabbos, you can, but that's Sisa to be Shekher, that's Maniach. Yeah. Thank you. Would that yes. Be, would there be enough for me to keep the tension between with your stone where you've removed the impediment and you decided to use it as a starter? That can work, say, for that next Shabbat particular, but it's not going to work forever. As Masha Ain came with a situation where you actually turn something into a proper clean, then it's available forever. So, uh, uh, look, I mean, La Halacha, if your barrel six, sits in your cellar for six months, it, 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 on no Shabbos would it be Moksa, because I'm planning to use the stone. We saw last year the run who points out that, actually also quoting ironically the, uh, the Rashba, and who says that... Um, here, there's no yichud la'olam because there's nothing special about this stone. As soon as you finish this barrel, you're planning to to throw this. The stone has had its moments of glory, and now it's uh, thrown back into the uh, into the pile of stones, and there's nothing special about it. But but kolzman that you're using as a lid, it would be it would be muchan. But that that's the point. It hasn't become a kadi because there's nothing special about it. How can you say it's a kadi? It's nothing nothing kadi like about it. But you can't say it's mukta says Ravasi for use as a lid because you you had intention to use a lid. Ravami disagrees with all of this. Ravami says not true. If you haven't made a change in it and done a significant tikkun, how can you say it's not mukta? There's nothing significant about this stone. Tomorrow you'll throw it away. It's like it's like 
It's identical to thousands of other stones in the world. There's nothing. It's a stone. Where do we find this idea that you can be making something which isn't Akedi and, and say that it's Akedi? That's the, that, that's the machlokas going on here. You have the ability to make that stone into a permanent just with, he doesn't need, he doesn't just for that one Shabbat, it could work forever. It, 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 um, yes, but in, in a very limited way, meaning it still wouldn't become Akedi. No, but but it, 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 correct, yeah, because it's a, you've you're, you've decided to use it as a lid. Yeah, absolutely. What would it take to make it into a KD? You'd have to carve it out, make something something special in in, in itself. Okay, let's just use the um the last remaining minutes just to uh, just carry on working our way through the sikya. Um, so we're hearing this story of Rebbe and his talmidim Motz and Matrach Shel Avonim. Um, the Omar the Talmidov Suv Chishvu Kadesh Shemeshiv Aleim. Um. I, I think I printed in the source sheet just, just for your perusal, a very interesting ritva who says that um, you need re'iyah. Why does he say to the chishru, go out and have a look? Why can't they just plan? Why do they have to look at it? Very interesting idea. How 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 much do you need to do in order to make something uh, muchan? Uh, again, we're, we're talking here that, that there's sort of quite a profound concept going on over here. You've got a pile of stones. They're just a pile of stones. It's a pile of of um, uh, of rubble. What make? What do you have to do to make this rubble muchum? Intentionality, but how, how much intentionality? Uh, the ritual says you need re'ir. Very, very interesting, uh, interesting idea. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I found this brought to halacha. Um, I think I also printed Rabbi Nuchanan. I hope I did. Who says that? Um, so, ooh, he says in the plural seems to imply that everyone has to go out. So can my intentionality help for you? Also an interesting question. So um, with the Chavis, I guess it doesn't make sense. Someone owns the Chavis, the owner of the Chavis. But here with the Nadrach, is it enough that one of the Talmidim from the uh, holy Chavra of uh, Rabbi is enough for them to go out and think? Or do you need everyone to go out for each individual purpose? What, if, if the Mukhan that we're dealing with is somewhat subjective and somewhat about my plans, can one person's intentionality help for everyone else? Rabbi Nuchanan again discusses the idea. Again, as far as I can see in Halacha, there's no mention of such a kiddush. It's not, it's not a Halacha requirement. It's just interesting in terms of the, the concepts going on over here. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. I mean, that, that the, it's Rabbi that stole the stones. So I wonder if he could designate it by, because he stole them. He's the only one, he's the only person who actually stole the stones. So could he designate from where he is and say, why did he send it to them if he was the one that actually stole the stones? So that, that's really the question. Yeah. Th that, that, that is the point. There's something bizarre about the story. What is he telling his students? If they need shift to so fine, he, he's the rabbi, he's not going to go and start polishing stones. So he sends his palmidim to it. But if all they need is su'uru'u, what, what, why is he telling them to go out? Is the answer that he's gone back home and then he thinks actually it'll be quite convenient? So he says, you go out and do it. Why do they have to go out? Why can't he think it from, from the hotel where he's staying? The the problem is the you have to say something like that, by the way, because the post can do not bring this. Post can don't bring that you need seeing and they don't bring as far as I recollect, and they don't bring that you need everyone to do it. But it's not a the was shown them a right, they didn't in my agreement, but they right to flag this because it's not the greatest reading in the story, because he doesn't say that to them. It says Motsa Nadvashalavanim. Rebbe found a Nadvashalavanim. So he found it. So he's there. And then he says, Suva Khishfu, Kadesh Nation, and Nakh, go and think. Well, what's the what's the Khishfu? It sounds like that's uh Hathana just. All all they had to do was he didn't make them need a Mysa. Why are why is there them there at all? What's what's it go with the what's it got to do with the, the Talmudim? <laughs> Oh, it, we, we have to say some different to answer because Allah it doesn't it doesn't end up. But in the simplest reading of the story, Rebbe finds this stones, he sees they're suitable, and then he says to the students, You have to go out and think so that we can sit on them tomorrow. Why? Why do the students have to do anything? He's done it. He's he decides that's where they're gonna to sit tomorrow. He's the Rebbe. Why why isn't it enough to think? Why does he even need to bother sending them? Why do they have to go out? So there's lots of questions on the story that shown him who read the Gemara's care. Flag the questions and believe it's significant, but uh, answer, not enough to cross the critical threshold of, of an iron cut and proof, and therefore seems not to make its way into halacha. It's interesting. You said the answer by saying that each person has to designate the own chef, so you can't do it for everyone else. No, that, that's one answer. That's Rabbi Nuchanan's answer. That Rabbi Nuchanan brings our Gemara and he cites it as a proof that each person has to designate. Mm -hmm. 
But as far as I recollect, that's not called halacha. No one brings such an idea halacha. The Ritva says they have to see it. Another answer to the question. That's an alternative answer. Again, as far as I recollect, not called halacha. The official need to not just think about it, you go and examine it, measure it, so check it out carefully. So that's um you just said that that um that I can't remember, I know it was in that direction. Someone just made that no, you just make that comment or yeah. yeah, that's your okay. That's your suggestion. Maybe it's not about Akhan, or maybe it's just checking suitability. But again, it, 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 you you may have to say something like that in order to understand why Lalocha this isn't considered an ironclad proof. It doesn't seem when you read the Gemara, it's not till I raise raise this question, it's not how any of us read it. We all read it as go out and think because you need Akhana in your mind. So that's certainly the easiest, most intuitive reading in the Gemara. I don't know. Okay, I, I share that with you. Um, I wish everyone a... Uh, uh, we'll still meet Tuesday, so uh, I won't wish you have to see you at over. I mean, we should have a see you over, but uh, which then, and uh, I'll see you Tuesday, Mr. Jam. The plan for Tuesday is I'd like to finish this Gemara and this source sheet, um, and then and then that's it for this month, or we've got next week, and that's so it's made sure. Oh, wonderful. Okay, we've got a week afterwards. Good. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. 100%.